What is going on? Happy Monday. Got about a thousand yards going down. One pump, 58 meter Poots Meister up on the, uh, I think it's level seven, something like that. Got uh, trucks for days. Let's see a little better from this angle. Trucks for days. Pump is wound out, but the mix is real, real sticky. So they're uh, 80 meters. 80 cubic meters per hour is kind of where it's maxed out at. We'll check in on the uh, on the meter here. The fancy computer unit. on the deck and have a little check in see what's happening with the guys. Alright, so here we are up top on the business end of things. So you can see they got a four inch hose on the end. The reason for that was at the very far end though they had to put a pretty good push on the hose. The other reason is they're trying to as best as they can guide it through the steel. But look at this look how tight this is. Yeah, that's a good time. Isn't that crazy? So the theory is the four inch hose, a little smaller steam, try and guide it through the bar. Even at that, yeah, they're having a hell of a time. It's a bit of a slow go, but it is what it is, so. So yeah, they're a little over halfway here. They've been at this for about uh, six hours. We're getting there. Big run on the hose. I feel like every day I see Big Ron now. I go weeks without seeing him, and then we see each other every day for about a week. So this is level seven transfer slab. This building goes up. Uh, 28 stories or something like that. So I think they're gonna pour a few more levels with the pump and then uh, switch over to crane and bucket. So another beautiful Vancouver day. Those in the background there, those are 55 story towers. Those were done with a, uh, I think an Alliance JMP 2100 truck mount, I believe is what was used to pump those two towers. Lots of tall towers going up there in Burnaby. Yep, 58 is uh, earning her keep today. Trucks on standby, waiting to go. They've had pretty good service all day here. So. We'll stop by that place for a hot dog and an ice cream cone. I think it's the right thing to do. Considering how sticky this stuff is and how hard the pump is pushing, it's actually pretty stable on the end hose. All things considered. Ride is no good, Big Ron is the first guy to let you know. And you don't want to make him angry. Because he's freaking huge. See how he's trying to point that stuff in between the grid of the bar? 
four and a half or five inch hose, we'll be stacking that up a little bit more so. so. That's why it's so bouncing. You want to be on YouTube? Huh? You want to be on YouTube? I have a YouTube channel. You can be on it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. There is no best side. They're all great. They're all great. YouTube? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. You can be a star. What's up with the small hose? Is that just to point us to the bar? Is that the idea? You have to see what we're seeing there? Yeah. The first oh, same, oh, same thing. Dry our concrete and it was so dark we couldn't see. Ah, uh, so. Needed like two or three vibrators, man, just to so get that's why I used the small hose. Yeah, so okay. Try to ask them so we can fry the bars up for us. Yeah. To get it in there. Yeah, okay. So, wait. So, what they were sent to a crossing. Yeah. So, you have them guys to redo all that shit there. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's going to be a good time over there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's super tight over there. It's almost got to go under and come up. Yeah. Guess what Ron was talking about there with how tight this steel is. They got to fill from wherever the voids are and get the concrete to flow under and then come back up because there's no way this is going to pass through from the top. This is the most steel I've ever seen. This is crazy. There is a way, though. There's always a way. Oh, God, there's just a find that way. Or something like that. Look at this thing bounce when they wind it up. It's got 8% air in it. Just jumping all over the place. This is probably the most stable boom in our fleet. This one's old school and they still built them heavy, heavy. It does have the EBC boom dampening on it. Unfortunately, that feature has been uh, non-functional for a few years now. It was uh, extremely high maintenance. I'm sure it's gotten better uh, as the uh, time has gone on and technology has progressed. But it's got little uh, level sensors on each section of the boom. I'll zoom in on one. Right, right there. There's that little box on the boom. That's one of the level sensors. But those tend to uh, poop the bed about once every year or two, especially in our climate when it gets wet, things freeze. So. Hey, look at this guy's watching. <laughs> this guy's watching my video right now. Yeah, watch that one too. Did you subscribe to the channel? Yeah. You have to subscribe. You can't just watch them. <laughs> Perfect. Still not setting? No. Oh wow, that's been down for a few hours. Yeah. Is that the air or what? What do you think it is? The air and the cold. The what is it? What is it? 40 or 65 MPA? I don't know how much that is. Because we did 65 MPA a few weeks ago and it was freezing and it did not set at all. And then we did 40 on Saturday and it was just like rocket fuel. So I don't know, I can't figure it out. They probably had an accelerator. Yeah. So quickly, just to circle back on that boom damping feature, which I was speaking about earlier, um, how it works, to the best of my knowledge, is as the pump strokes and it surges and the sections bounce and surge, it, uh, the computer system will apply hydraulic pressure to the uh, specific boom cylinders to counteract that surging motion. Uh, apparently, they do a really cool uh, demo with it uh, where they stretch a boom out in the yard empty and they bounce they get a guy to bounce the end bounce the boom and it's bouncing up and down five or six feet and then they activate the ebc function and it takes all the bounce out of it it is uh very effective when doing things like bridge deck mixes uh really sticky mixes like what we're doing today here high air mixes things like that so it does have its place um we didn't really use it all that often, hence why we didn't bother keeping up on the uh, 
expensive maintenance to keep it functioning properly. Um, there also was a little bit of a learning curve to using it. There's some very specific uh, tricks and ins and outs to uh, getting the most out of the system. Um, so just all in all, just uh, for our application, it wasn't really worth it. But it is a cool feature in the, uh, the right instance. Uh, and for those of us that are going to say that uh, we're really, really close to the wires here, this is uh, an optical illusion. I'm going to show you that we, in fact, are about 60 feet away from the wires. See? Told you so. We wouldn't do something unsafe. That would be stupid. And we don't want to be stupid. So. Got a raft of dunnage up here on the front. Capped off with some dicapads. Something even on the dog side for good measure. How all this started off, this impromptu video, uh, I just came down here to fuel this thing up. This machine does not have the uh, fuel selector valve that automatically draws from the outrigger tank. So I gotta come down here, my little filler nozzle, and kick it old school. Here's a fun little story about this pump on this job site, and I'll try and dig up the photos and uh, add them in here. Uh, maybe two months ago we were here, and we were pulling out of here. When you get up to the top of the hill where the light is there, you gotta hang a hard left right at the crest of the hill. Well, this pump has a very, very tender power divider transmits power from that first drive axle, the one missing the center cap, to the second drive axle, and the very last axle is also a drive axle. The second to last is just a floater. Um, so what happens is if you do not engage the inter axle lock, and you pick up an axle, any one of the drive axles, and it starts spinning, when it comes back down and touches down on the asphalt, the power divider, the output shaft, just goes ping and uh, snaps in. We've probably been through literally 10 of those on this pump. So much so that uh, we actually keep all the parts to replace it in stock. So we had our uh, buddy David Pemble from Mountainside Repair came in on a Sunday and fixed this thing on the side of the road. Because the try and tow this thing is a major, major operation. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's been... Uh, the soft spot in this pump ever since new is that uh, that output shaft is just not quite beefy enough. I don't know if they've uh, upgraded or updated these things with a larger unit in uh, more recent years, but on this one here, man oh man, you really got to be drive uh, drive tenderly with this thing. So but I'll try and dig up those photos and throw them in right about now. Just like that, I am out. So uh, my duties are done here. The fuel tank has been filled and I will carry on with uh, other miscellaneous duties for the day. Anyhow, thanks for watching. It's just a, a little shorty, a little bit of an impromptu iPhone video. 
But uh, once again, like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe.